What's up guys? Here we are uh, at the House of Horsepower and today is the day we're working on the Sonic Stang. First thing we're going to be doing is the hot side for the turbo system. Uh, if you're new to the whole turbo thing, basically the hot side, that term just means the piping that's going to go to here, which is going to be where the turbo sits and it's going to spool the exhaust side of the turbo. Pretty uh, simple stuff. Most people know that these days now that turbos are the thing. We got factory manifolds on here. Here's what we're going to be working with far as tubing. Don't really mind this too much. I'm gonna put this muffler on the Sierra probably, so I'm cutting that off for that. But I might use some of this three and a half inch piping for uh, the merge at the uh, turbo there. This is two and a half inch. All this is two and a half inch. These are two and a half inch. So the hot side itself is gonna be two and a half inch. We already had uh, some problems early on where uh, I didn't have any nuts for those flanges to hold them in place, which is Kind of the first step for doing this. Look at those welds. Is that factory GM? Do you think? I don't know. Because who else would have, like we got this off a stock truck at the junkyard, who else would have welded this flange up? Yeah. The truck didn't have like aftermarket exhaust or anything, so. Anyways, it's ugly as shit, but I'm sure my welding is gonna be no better, so it'll fit in. First step is gonna be to get these on, figure out where I wanna cut them. They have the O2 sensor thing, so I'll probably you know, cut below that. I want to leave those. Cut it about here. Show you the progress along the way as we do this. Let's uh, go and uh, Sonic Stang. Clayton in his pajamas again. So it's 20 minutes later now and all we've done is search for nuts. Can't, we can't find any nuts. Uh, metric nuts. So we got two on that side. We managed to scrounge through like every box of old Sonic Stang stuff, and we got this bin here. We didn't fully dump out. We weren't committed to that yet. I went through this box of random LS shithorse parts, more random LS shithorse parts. It, it was a deep dive, guys, and all we could find is three. I, uh, I had this idea, and I convinced Clayton, as is typical, to do kind of something sloppy. And we just got the vice grips holding her down for the that side with one nut there. You gotta buy a little metric bolt then. Yeah. Well, no, I actually, I have at home, I should have brought my box with like LS nuts and bolts. And I mean, Rob right. could hook us up too, he would have, but anyways, First now we're actually gonna do some work maybe. You come over here. Yeah. We're just uh, discussing how we're gonna start this off here. The first step, I think is uh, gonna be taking that flange back off and cutting it how we want it, which is just right after the O2. But I think we should cut it at a bit of an angle to pull this. That's kind of what we gotta figure out too. Cause ultimately it'd be nice, like my plan was that it would come in line with this, with the flange, turbo flange, are we, are and then we, just uh, be a 90 are there. Are we doing pie cuts everywhere? Or? Yeah, I mean, we can make it as ugly as we wanted. Well, pie cuts aren't ugly. Some people Depending how, some people like, I'm talking they're... sloppy, big welded pie cuts. Oh. Yeah, it looks pretty level there. You can almost pig weld this fucking thing, guys. That was just by eye. I'm pretty blind. So now let's uh, put this in the car and see how it, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see how the angle is on the car. Perfect. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not the prettiest angle there, but I mean, the way that you would fix that is not using this piece of cutoff flange with O2 sensor there. I mean, technically we could cut it up higher. Save your, save money on a bun. It, basically that's what we're doing here. Okay, so now we and just I mean, gotta... why not? That doesn't look too bad at all. No, Especially man. once it's wrapped. I think the angle's pretty good. Yeah. But we'll just shorten it now. Yeah, that'll be the next thing to figure out. We'll have to mark like a straight line so we know the orientation of the, the turning of the pipe and uh, how much we want to cut off and start cutting. 
Measure twice, cut once. Oh, I left the grinding guard on there. Can you see better now? I really wanted to get a new camera before doing any of this, but I really wanted to get this going tonight. All right, so we cut the first 90 down a bit. A little dark in there, but uh, you can see what we got going on here. I put uh, all this ghetto rigged stuff down here just so we can kind of get a bit of a visual. Our of plumb. Yeah, that's our plumb line right there. So how it is right now, it's too low. If uh, I got under the car or looked here and you know, I don't want to be able to see it basically below the core support. I think that's probably a safe rule of thumb as far as height for hot sides. So what we're going to do is take a bit off the top of the angle. So it twists up. Wait, hold on. Hold it there again for a second. And then like twist it up like our, yeah. how I was saying. Yeah, so that'll give us the height that we need up, and then we'll just have to shorten it a bit to bring it away from the radiator just, again. We'll cut this at an angle. Or that. Yeah. Either piece. You also have to keep your electric fans or whatever type of fans you're using or shroud in mind, but uh, if it's about that far away, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. So I cut another piece off this uh, 90 degree here that we're working with. We're trying to make it a bit shorter because I really don't want it to stick lower than the core support. Even though the K-member does and everything, it, it just doesn't look good. And for like clearance getting on trailers and stuff, it wouldn't be good. So just to give you an idea of how we're doing. And Clayton's on the phone with a uh, local small tire racer. What's up? Why wouldn't I? Anyways. I will. All right, so now it's like way later. Uh, as usual, when I'm left to my own devices in here, it takes some time because, you know, I'm afraid to mess up these things, but 12.33 it is. Uh, it's Thursday night, so I do gotta work tomorrow. I'm not really too concerned about that, but I feel like I kinda hit a stopping point here just because it's kinda hard to do this with uh, out an extra set of hands to hold it and for you, me to check things. The next step will just be putting a tack weld on there. And you can kind of see how that goes. It's hard to, I gotta maybe, for like the last hour I've been trying to, you know, surface them, make them even so they fit really tight. But I think the gaps will be good enough to MIG weld. It has to turn a little bit, but whatever, you get the idea. So, it's a start. I mean, fuck. There's been nothing done on this thing forever, so. I guess anything is better than nothing. I kind of wanted to at least get this side done, but really after that's tack welded in place, uh, there'll just be a straight piece and then another one of these 90s. Me and Clayton were fitting here. Like that, right? That'll go in there. If it's a little more back, we can adjust that angle here. But yeah, so just a straight piece in between, that'll be done. And we were looking at this side. I can't remember if we showed you guys this already or not, but like this side will probably work with a 90 as well. Fairly easily. As usual, we're kind of working with basic tools here. I've been using the flap wheel on the grinder and the cut wheel, obviously. And then we have the chop saw over here. But if there is one tool that I wish I had access to in here right now, it'd be like some sort of you know, stationary sanding. I don't know what it would be called, but something I could put this up against and just give it a nice flat, plain, plain, something like that. And back to a functioning winter Winnipeg garage. Look at this thing, guys. Clayton made a comment about this earlier. He said, is it a piece for a toilet or something? But actually, this is going to be the start of the exhaust for the car. 
Right now we're doing the hot side, which is before the turbo, but after the turbo, the exhaust comes out towards the fender there. And basically, I'm just gonna stick this in there and have it coming straight up out the fender, about like that. It's uh, what the drag racing guys call a bullhorn. It's supposed to keep the, uh, the front down if it wants the wheelie, if you have too much power. We're not doing that. But <laughs> it's gonna be facing down. Hopefully there's enough room in there, but yeah. Look at that friggin' thing. That's friggin' huge. Five inch OD. That's crazy. If you're new to the channel and you're curious before you comment, it's gonna be an S475 turbo with a 132 AR. This is a 5.3 with an LS9 cam. Other than that, it's basically stock. And I gotta get out of here for the night because it's like one in the morning now. And I wanna edit this for you guys to have tomorrow. Uh, Saturday will be the next time I'm working on this. I'm thinking of like a full day Saturday, a full poll. Like, comment, subscribe. I mean, if you like, Subscribing is kind of important because then you get to see the videos. You also got to hit the bell if you actually want to see the videos these days on YouTube. But anyway, I'm done talking. I'm done wasting your time. That's been uh, day one. Not too much done, but we're going and that's all that matters. So we'll see you guys later.